My people want me home. Do you understand me? Right now, they want me back home in Newfoundland. Much more important things to do than listen to trash like that. Hastings Bondo was a charismatic and controversial figure in Malawi's history, leading the country to independence and serving as its first president. Born in 1898 in the British Protectorate of Nyasaland, which later became Malawi, Bonda played a pivotal role in the struggle for independence and the development of the nation. Keep watching to learn more about Dr. Hastings' Kamuzu Bonda and his unorthodox style of leadership. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps our channel grow and enables us to make more videos like this one. Hastings Bonda was born in a small village in Nyasaland, a region that was under British colonial rule. His parents were subsistence farmers, and Bonda grew up in modest circumstances. Despite his humble beginnings, Bonda was determined to pursue an education and improve his life prospects. He attended a local mission school, where he excelled academically and quickly gained the attention of his teachers. Recognizing his potential, they encouraged him to pursue further education in South Africa. In 1925, Bonda left Nyasaland for South Africa to attend a prestigious boarding school. During this time, he was exposed to various political ideologies and became increasingly aware of the injustices faced by African people under colonial rule. This experience ignited a passion for political activism and a desire to fight for the rights of his people. After completing his secondary education, Bonda traveled to the United States to study at several universities, earning a degree in history and political science. He then attended the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, where he studied medicine and eventually qualified as a doctor. Throughout his studies, Bonda remained committed to the cause of African independence, and his experiences abroad further solidified his determination to fight for the liberation of his homeland. In the early 1950s, Hastings Bonda returned to Nyasaland to practice medicine and engage in political activism. He joined the Nyasaland African Congress, an organization advocating for the rights of Africans and an end to British colonial rule. Bonda quickly rose through the ranks of the NAC, becoming its leader in 1958. Under Banda's leadership, the NAC began to push for greater autonomy and independence from Britain. He organized protests, strikes, and other acts of civil disobedience, which brought attention to the cause of independence both within Nyasaland and internationally. Banda's activism played a significant role in the eventual decision by the British government to grant Nyasaland the right to self-governance in 1963. On July 6, 1964, Nyasaland officially gained its independence from Britain and became the nation of Malawi. Hastings Bonda was elected as the country's first prime minister and later assumed the role of president after Malawi became a republic in 1966. Banda's rise to power marked a significant moment in the history of Malawi as the country finally had the opportunity to determine its own future. As the leader of the newly independent Malawi, Banda faced numerous challenges in shaping the nation's political, economic, and social landscape. He sought to create a stable and prosperous country that would be able to stand on its own without reliance on foreign aid or intervention. Banda's leadership style was characterized by a strong central government and a focus on self-sufficiency in agriculture and industry. During his time in office, Hastings Banda implemented a wide range of policies aimed at promoting economic growth and development in Malawi. He prioritized education, healthcare, and infrastructure, investing heavily in these areas to improve the quality of life for the country's citizens. One of Banda's most significant achievements was the implementation of a comprehensive primary education system, ensuring that all children in Malawi had access to basic education. This policy led to a dramatic increase in literacy rates and provided a strong foundation for the country's future development. Banda also sought to improve the country's healthcare system, establishing hospitals and clinics throughout Malawi and training a new generation of healthcare professionals. This focus on healthcare led to significant improvements in public health, with a marked decrease in the prevalence of diseases such as malaria and tuberculosis. In terms of infrastructure, Banda's government invested heavily in the construction of roads, bridges, and other essential facilities, connecting rural communities with urban centers and opening up new economic opportunities for Malawians. 
Despite the progress made under Banda's leadership, his regime was not without controversy. Critics accused Banda of authoritarianism as he maintained strict control over the government and suppressed political opposition. Banda's regime was characterized by a one-party state, with the Malawi Congress Party serving as the only legal political entity in the country. This lack of political pluralism stifled dissent and limited the ability of citizens to participate in the political process. Banda cultivated a personality cult around himself, encouraging people to refer to him as Ngwazi, the conqueror, and the life president. He demanded unwavering loyalty and respect from his subjects and required them to perform acts of public adoration. He even referred to cabinet ministers as his boys. Banda was known for his eccentricities and peculiar behavior. He had a penchant for wearing three-piece suits and bowler hats, even in the scorching African heat. He was also obsessed with cleanliness and reportedly had his staff meticulously clean his office and living spaces. His government supervised Malawians very closely. Early in his rule, Banda instituted a dress code rooted in his socially conservative predilections. Women were not allowed to wear see-through clothing, to have visible cleavages, trousers, and were not allowed to wear skirts or dresses that went above the knees. The only exception to this was at vacation resorts and country clubs, where they could not be seen by the general public. Banda explained that these restrictions were not designed to oppress women, but instill respect and dignity for them. Men's hair had to be no longer than collar length, and foreign visitors at the airport were given mandatory haircuts if necessary. Any man who ventured into public with long hair could also be seized by police and subjected to an involuntary haircut. Hippies and men with long hair and flared trousers were not allowed entry into Malawi. Additionally, Banda's regime was accused of human rights abuses, including the detention and torture of opposition figures and the suppression of freedom of speech and assembly. These actions led to international condemnation and strained Malawi's relationships with other nations. While many Southern African nations traded with apartheid-era South Africa out of economic necessity, Banda was the only African ruler to establish diplomatic ties with South Africa during apartheid. His staunch anti-communist stance influenced his decision to seek warm relations with South Africa, even visiting Prime Minister B.J. Forster in 1971 amidst an outcry from the OEU. Banda's focus on self-sufficiency in agriculture and industry did lead to some economic growth. It also resulted in a reliance on a single cash crop, tobacco, which made the country vulnerable to fluctuations in global markets. This economic strategy ultimately proved unsustainable and contributed to the country's ongoing struggle with poverty. In the early 1990s, growing domestic and international pressure led to a transition towards multi-party democracy in Malawi. In 1994, the country held its first multi-party elections and Hastings Banda was defeated by Bakili Maluzi, who became Malawi's second president. Hastings Banda died in Johannesburg, South Africa on November 25, 1997, from respiratory failure. Although his recorded age was 99, government officials state it was more likely he was aged around 90. Like so many other autocrats, a mausoleum with provision for a library and a dancing arena was built in Malawi's capital, Lilongwe, in 2009. At a cost of $600,000, the mausoleum is made out of marble and granite. Its four main pillars bear the initials of Banda's key principles, unity, loyalty, obedience, and discipline. Despite the controversies and criticisms surrounding his regime, Banda's legacy as a founding father of Malawi and a champion of African independence cannot be denied. His leadership laid the groundwork for the establishment of a modern, independent nation, and his efforts to improve education, healthcare, and infrastructure have had a lasting impact on the country.